I think in this world of exponential change, we really have to step back and rethink dramatically what education is about. If you think about it, from my point of view, education can be looked at as at least um, three things we expect. There's knowledge, there's skills, and there's dispositions. Knowledge today, I pull from the internet so rapidly that now I think of, for example, my cell phone uh, as basically being a curiosity amplifier. Wherever I am, I suddenly encounter something I don't quite know about, and I can pull the information from the net uh, at the moment of need, which means now I know why I'm pulling it, now I know how to use it, now I know if it doesn't work, why, and that generates more curiosity to pull more knowledge. Okay? So there's a new way to get knowledge today that we don't need to use a push technique in classrooms, we can use a pull technique in action-based learning. But there's something called skills. Skills you don't pull from the internet quite so easily. Skills you pick up with mentoring. And so now you look at where are the various forms of mentoring. Now you can get certain types of mentoring in terms of studio-based learning in schools. Um, you also get mentoring in the broader ecosystem all around us. So you think about how do you kind of find the right network of mentors in order to help develop those skills. But perhaps, perhaps the most important thing is dispositions. How do you develop a disposition that says, I can embrace change? A disposition that says, oh, learning can be an adventure. Oh, if I don't know something, let's immediately look it up, and so on. Um, I feel comfortable with not knowing. I feel comfortable with the adventure of seeing change as an opportunity to say, oh, there's something new. It's like playing the right kinds of video games. I expect new things, new challenges, new quests to happen all the time. Now, dispositions can't be taught, but dispositions get cultivated. If you really want to know what schools should be about, especially universities should be about, is those are the physical spaces that cultivate dispositions. I begin to experience multiple epistemic communities coming together. I can participate in multiple communities. I begin to understand that from my point of view, what a theoretical mathematician thinks of being elegant is not what an engineer, is not what a physicist thinks of being elegant, let alone a humanist. And I can begin to understand how different professional communities kind of have their own senses of aesthetics, their own sense of elegance, their own sense of what is an explanation, and so on and so forth. So campuses will not be replaced by MOOCs. Campuses now have to reflect more on their role in terms of cultivation and a little bit more in how do they do mentoring. So I think we're going to find a major shift of emphasis to say, instead of pushing knowledge into my head, even before I think I need to know it, I want to actually create the context to be able to feel comfortable pulling, use my peers around me to question things, to reflect in practice, and then actually expect to be mentored and cultivated in terms of these fantastic places. I can't walk on MIT's campus across the campus without being excited. Am I learning something in terms of new knowledge? No. I'm ex being exposed to people who are tremendously excited for different reasons, and I get to meet them, I get to talk to them. This is what the game is as we go forward. This makes learning an adventure. Wow. That was great. Oh, okay. Yay. No, you're not. Well, oh, I'm not. Okay. What does well-being mean to you? Um, I constantly get asked all the kind of issues of technology. How can we radically improve medical care? I like to reframe that and say, maybe that's the wrong question. The real question is, what are the techniques we can use to maintain well-being? And what I find so curious today is even taking the simple apps that are appearing right now on iPhone, et cetera, et cetera, how do those apps actually help me lead a healthier life? Um, there are a lot of apps that are starting to do this, but let me give you one kind of simple example. Some of you know I come out of the world of Warcraft where in playing those games, uh, high-end raids, et cetera, et cetera, everything thrives on your ability to build a dashboard. Now, in World of Warcraft, I build the dashboard for myself. 
in order to better reflect on how I'm spending my time. In the corporate world, my manager creates my dashboard for me. It's not to help me, it's to help something else. I like to think about what are the dashboards that we want to create for ourselves that look at what we're really doing, what we're really eating, how often my blood pressure gets out of sight, all these types of things. How honest am I, myself? Do I just disguise his last piece of ginger I gobbled down and didn't bother to make a record of and so on and so forth. Uh, and so I think that we have to look at how do we build tools that help us honestly reflect on our own behaviors and our own consumption patterns. And I think if we can do that, we already have a major step toward being a healthier generation, if not a healthier nation.